ustedes, señores convencionistas. Agradecemos su presencia en la Sala Internacional. Además, a nombre de la organización, eh, por favor, se les indica que lo, las mochilas que les están entregando antes del inicio de este evento se, la, se les será entregado a quienes les falta durante el Coffee Break. Ahora sí, señores y señores convencionistas, les damos la bienvenida en el marco de la Sala Internacional en el Perú Min 32 Convención Minera, el evento más importante del sector. Saludamos la presencia de nuestras autoridades de Arequipa, representantes de las instituciones empresariales invitadas y especialmente a nuestros amigos y amigos aquí presentes y también a los miembros de la prensa nacional e internacional que se congregan en este auditorio. Esta mañana nos congrega un espacio de diálogo en el Encuentro Internacional, y tiene como propósito promover el intercambio de experiencias académicas, económicas y culturales con otros países y con otras potencias, como es el caso de los Estados Unidos, uno de los principales inversionistas en nuestro país. Comenzamos este encuentro precisamente con los Estados Unidos, país minero por excelencia, que ha contribuido enormemente al desarrollo de la minería mundial, con sus grandes aportes científicos y tecnología de punta. Tenemos el honor que nos acompañen los representantes de la Society for Mining, Metallurgy and Exploration, institución hermana del Instituto de Ingenieros de Minas del Perú, dedicada a mejorar el desarrollo técnico de disciplinas de la minería metalúrgica y medio ambiente, así como también del Servicio Geológico de los Estados Unidos. La jornada también contará con la presencia de los principales y eh, empresarios y empresas mineras asistentes a esta convención minera que además invierten en nuestro país para que puedan compartir con ustedes su valioso conocimiento sobre el sector de las charlas técnicas. El programa que hemos diseñado para esta edición está conformado por atractivas y enriquecedoras actividades, cada una de ellas planteadas con el fin de ser el mayor interés y mayor utilidad para cada uno de ustedes. En ese sentido, los invitamos a que nos acompañen en esta primera edición del Encuentro Internacional, la cual consideramos una excelente oportunidad para demostrar que el sector minero sigue contribuyendo en el desarrollo del país. Sin mayor preámbulo, entonces, tengo el honor de presentar al ingeniero Antonio Samaniego, quien es el presidente del Instituto de Ingeniero de Minas del Perú, para que pueda dar la bienvenida a todos ustedes a este espacio internacional. Lo recibimos con fuertes palmas. Muy buenos días, Steve, el presidente de la Sociedad de Ingenieros de Minas de Estados Unidos, Dave, vicepresidente ejecutivo, Rómulo Mucho, presidente del capítulo eh, SME de Perú. Estimados estudiantes todos, es una, un gran placer para el Instituto de Ingenieros de Minas haber tenido este eh, <coughs> perdón, congreso de estudiantes por primera vez y que vamos a dar como, digamos, pauta general el poder aprender de lo que se hace en la Sociedad Internacional de Ingenieros de Minas, el SME, cómo manejan ellos el, el capítulo de estudiantes. Y yo creo que para muchos de ustedes es la primera oportunidad de pertenecer a un Student Chapter. Yo creo que es una muy buena forma de iniciar su vida profesional. Y ustedes, a través de los años, van a ver cómo se van a vincular con muchos estudiantes en esta época, más adelante profesionales, y van a poder tener un vínculo muy grande de profesionales y amigos. Entonces, la, yo les deseo lo, lo mejor para esta charla que se inicia el día, esta mañana, y como les decía, el Instituto de Ingenieros de Minas los, los acoge y les da la bienvenida. Muchas gracias. Agradecemos entonces las palabras del presidente del Instituto de Ingeniero de Minas del Perú y también hacemos extensivo el saludo a los representantes de la Mesa de Honor, al ingeniero Rómulo Mucho y también al presidente y vicepresidente de SME. A continuación tendremos las palabras de inauguración que estará a cargo justamente el presidente, el ingeniero Steven Garner, a quien lo invitamos al podio. Buenos días. Bienvenido. Did I do that right? <laughs> Un momento. Before we start, I will do this. <laughs> And this. 
Gracias. <laughs> My Espanol, very little, but I am so glad to see all of you here today. You heard uh, Dave Kanegi, our executive director, who is based in Denver, Colorado. Would also like to embarrass my daughter and introduce her, Katie Gardner, who is a mining engineer in Nevada, U.S., works for Newmont at their Leeville mine. She was also an SME member, president of the student chapter at Kentucky. So it's my honor and pleasure to be here today. We love Arequipa, we love Peru, we love the food. <laughs> so I look forward to meeting many more of you while I'm here. And good luck in your future. Stay involved in SME, it's the way that you create friendships and careers and continue to learn throughout your profession. So, gracias, mucho gracias. Agradecemos las palabras entonces del ingeniero Stink Garden. Ahora los invitamos a ustedes, señores y señoras conferencistas, para que podamos escuchar la ponencia magistral justamente del ingeniero Steve Garden, quien disertará ante este auditorio la ponencia denominada Cambiando la percepción sobre la minería en el mundo. Hay que reconocer también que el ingeniero se desempeña como presidente de Engineer Consultant Assignment International. Entonces, sin más preámbulo, lo invitamos nuevamente para que pueda disertar ante este digno auditorio y compartir sus conocimientos en los siguientes minutos. Lo recibimos nuevamente con aplausos. talk a little bit about changing minds about the minds in the world. But first, we try to start all of our meetings now with a safety share and raising the awareness of safety in your everyday life. If you see here, This is an accident that occurred in the U.S. earlier this year with a contract worker in a shaft in a mine in Nevada, USA, who was riding up the shaft doing an inspection. He sneezed, achoo, and his head went down and got caught between a beam and the side of the platform he was riding on. So the safety takeaway is always be aware of your surroundings. You never know what's going to happen and be prepared. And this one struck home to me from a personal note because my daughter Katie works at that mine. She was working on that ventilation shaft project. So when I heard about that accident, it, it caused me, my heart to jump. I grew up on a tobacco farm in Kentucky. Never had any clue I would go into mining. I then went into agricultural engineering and got involved in mining through the environmental side. But the company I worked for was short on engineers and surveyors, so I got to work underground, and I loved it. I went back and got a master's in mining engineering. Let me take a few moments and talk about SME and who we are at this point in time. First, we have over 15,000 members worldwide. About 500 here in Peru, right, Dave? We have student chapters worldwide now, and I'll talk about that a little more in a moment. We're financially strong now. 
in spite of what's going on in the mining industry. It's something we have to be aware of and prepared for. We consider SME the technical information and bridge between academia, industry, and government. We have members in all sectors. We also have an underground construction association, which is the tunneling group worldwide. At our annual meetings, which I think some of you were able to attend, we had record attendance the last two years, and I hope many of you will be able to attend our next meeting in Phoenix, Arizona in February. We do successful regional conferences around the country and we cooperate with conferences like this worldwide. We have our international presence cooperating with CIM, Canadians, ASEM, Australians, SAIM, the South Africans, and IOM3 in Great Britain, and we hope to establish a better relationship with other groups like here in Peru. We get active in government and public affairs in the U.S., and something I'll talk about a little more in a moment. We have minerals education to reach out to young students in elementary and high schools to teach them about mining. We have several divisions within SME. We have our environmental division, our mineral and exploration division, our mineral processing division, coal and energy division, the underground construction association division, our WAMI division, which has a booth here at the show. They are very active in giving out scholarships. Some of you may have gotten them. My daughter received one. And we have our new health and safety division just starting this year to try to raise the awareness of safety in mining. Student membership. We have 41 student chapters. 10, I believe, here in Peru. Just last year, we had the three new ones formed in 2014 that you can see there. And this year, we have one new one and one pending and I expect many more worldwide in the future. Something we do at SME to look at the mining industry and decide how SME can help is look at the business trends. We identified the 10 top issues facing mining in 2015 according to Deloitte, an international financial and management consulting group. But those I have highlighted are ones that we decided that SME can help with. Back to the basics, operational excellence, looking at innovation in mining, new energy issues in mining, seeking new skill sets for the new generation of talent, and stakeholder engagement, balancing the competing interests between the public and mining and the needs of society. And then engaging government to find new ways to communicate and collaborate to establish successful projects. Our vision at SME is to be the premier resource and advocate for the mining community, you, and also to serve the professionals, again, those of you working in the industry and provide the resources you need to be successful. We did surveys of our members and some of the weaknesses that we identified. One was connection between our SME leadership and our local sections. That is something we're working on to try to establish a better relationship and provide better services to the members whether they're in a local section in Elko, Nevada, or in Lima, Peru, or Arequipa. The other thing that was identified by our members is the negative perception of mining in the public. 
And we decided that we would try to figure out how we can improve. We don't have the money to spend on television advertisements and large public relations campaigns, but we can figure out ways as engineers and geologists and scientists of how we can do a better strategy to help those in our industry. So why is it important to change minds about minds? I think it's elemental because that is what we need for society, for all of the things that we are used to in our day-to-day -day life. SME does a little visual aid, and I think this would be good if we could do that around the world. But in the US, these are the commodities that the average American uses in their day-to-day -day life. Now, some would say we use too much, and that's probably true. But that consumption level is going down as we find ways to produce goods more efficiently and produce our energy more efficiently. So how do we change minds? We have to define the opposition. This news story came out from Australia just this week that the head of BHP says that he's losing the public relations battle. You all know too well what's happened in Peru. Just a few months ago, the conflict and uh, protest that happened in Arequipa. And then there are threats of more protests this week. How do we better engage the public to show them that we're providing the needs of their society and be responsible in doing that? We have the same issues in the U.S. with the non-government organizations, the NGOs, as we call them. Uh, this was from a protest where they said no nukes, no coal, no fracking for energy production. That's essentially no nothing. I went to a meeting in Minnesota earlier this year and saw a billboard along a highway and a group called Mining Truth was protesting a new mine operation in Minnesota for iron ore. And I got on their website and the Mining Truth they were claiming was not true at all. The facts are misrepresented. That's what we need to do is get the facts, be able to tell people the facts about mining, the real facts. There's a large project proposed in Alaska that has been essentially vetoed by our EPA, our Environmental Protection Agency, before they even applied for permits. One of the largest uh, gold and, and metals deposits left untouched in the US. And in looking at the groups that protest, it's generally large companies that contribute money who feel like they're doing the right thing, but they don't realize that they're hurting their own businesses by doing that. I suspect the same is in Peru and many other countries around the world. So how can SME help? Let me discuss a few of our current initiatives. Health and safety. Anytime there is a mine tragedy where someone loses their life, it's a poor reflection on our mining industry. We decided to try and raise the status of health and safety in our industry. We've always been active doing health and safety programming, but we wanted to create a health and safety division to emphasize the health and safety in the mining so that's why we start every meeting with a safety share, just to raise that awareness. I try to tell everybody, make safety the first thing you think of in the morning when you wake up, for your own sake. We also are looking at mining and sustainability. Some would call that an oxymoron. 
that there's no way you can mine and still have a sustainable earth. I like to say that mining may not be sustainable, but the land after mining can certainly be sustainable. So we're engaged worldwide with the World Federation of Engineering Organizations looking at tools that the mining industry can use to be more successful in that arena. In the U.S., we're getting engaged with our governments through our Government Relations and Public Affairs Committee. We can't lobby government officials, but we can certainly provide facts to our government officials. And that's what we try to do. Something I think that all of us should do, no matter what our, who our government is. We have engaged a, a congressional fellow who works with our Congress and is available to provide the facts about mining in Washington, D.C. We're involved in many conferences in the U.S. and around the world, trying to cooperate and provide more resources. And of course, we're getting engaged with the social media. I still haven't learned how to tweet yet, but something they're trying to teach me. We have a very strong foundation that provides educational resources and scholarships. And one of the things that I'm very proud of, is being a former Boy Scout, is now in the US we have a Mining and Society Merit Badge something we're trying to work with international Boy Scouts to increase. The original merit badges that the Boy Scouts started had a mining merit badge, but was discontinued. And it took us 10 years to work through our U.S. Boy Scout organization. So I was proud of that. In the U.S., we've had 3,519 3, merit badges just in 2014. And the Boy Scout Jamboree, which is the largest gathering of Boy Scouts in the U.S., 40,000, is on a former mine site in West Virginia that was reclaimed to provide campgrounds and facilities for a two-week jamboree every four years. So I ask our SME members, how can you help? Get engaged with outreach. Use our SME tools. We have lots of resources on our website. We have a new website that was just launched that we feel is going to improve the access to information. Use the social media. I know you all do. We're trying to teach people my age how to use the social media more effectively. Talk to your friends and neighbors about mining. Don't talk in an angry way. Just give them the facts. I found when I talk to somebody that doesn't know anything about mining, we can usually convince them of the importance. Get involved politically. I know there are some in this room who are involved politically. <laughs> Leverage the free publicity of the press. Be willing to talk to them about mining. Tell the story of mining. This is a mine site in my home area, a coal mine on a mountaintop that was reclaimed to make this. People do not realize what you can do with mine sites after mining. In Florida, large phosphate mines were reclaimed to make this. So there is life after mining. And I borrowed this from our uh, NGO in the U.S., the Sierra Club. And I like to ask people, what does your activism mean to you? And it's paying your, your rent for living on the planet. And I think that's what we do in our profession. So I tell people, do not stick your head in the sand. <laughs> be an activist for mining and be willing to speak out. So our goals this year, we're working on education, health and safety, mining and sustainability, our local sections, the global outreach, and communications. And all of those, I think, help 
with public perception. I saw uh, a lot of information about uh, Yanacocha, I've heard about Tia Maria and, and many other projects in Peru. And I know there are a lot of controversies, but those problems can be solved with people like you getting involved. So, mucho gracias, and I look forward to the rest of our stay here in Peru. Agradecemos al ponente por su experiencia ante esta sala y también los invitamos a ustedes a la rueda de preguntas. Eh, en cada lado del auditorio estarán dos señoritas para que ustedes puedan dirigirse al expositor y puedan hacer llegar sus preguntas. Entonces, eh, ya están las señoritas con los micros dispuestos para que el público y los convencionistas aquí presentes puedan hacer llegar sus inquietudes o preguntas a nuestro expositor. Jóvenes. Steve, uh, Dave, eh, para mí es muy placentero saludarlos, esta sangre nueva, sangre joven, que queremos que tenga otra mentalidad. Eh, ha explicado sobre todas las posibilidades de que ofrece el SME como una institución tutelar en el mundo de la minería, más que todo hoy dedicado a la educación la educación, educación y cómo relacionarnos al mundo. Tengo la suerte, diríamos, de compartir siempre casi todos los años con, con el SM. No le he hecho llegar la carta de agradecimiento porque he cumplido 35 años como miembro de la SM. 35 años, gracias tío, gracias Dave. Y me siento feliz porque ha sido parte de mi formación profesional pertenecer al SME. Eh, la pregunta que quisiera hacerle a Steve es, eh, ¿cuál es la meta que tiene el SME? ¿Cuántos capítulos más en el mundo? Y nosotros siempre en el Perú, por la... la escasez de recursos que tienen las universidades, eh, no encontramos todavía ese, esa facilidad para, por ejemplo, ir a estudiar a los Estados Unidos, a excelentes escuelas, ¿no? ¿Cómo podríamos hacer una especie de beca, esfuerzo entre la empresa privada y también la educación? En Estados Unidos hay empresas mineras que dan profesores a las universidades, por ejemplo, a Sarco, Antonias, Cátedra a Sarco, tenía un especialista de su, a su cuenta la empresa en una universidad. Y acá hemos intentado, en Cátedra, por decir Río Tinto, o Cátedra Newmont, Cátedra, no sé, ¿no? que a su, a su cuenta de la empresa pone ¿no? un profesor. Y el SME, no sé si podría ayudarnos en el intercambio. Sabes que, muchachos, hoy día tenemos TLC. Un capítulo en el TLC es que un ingeniero peruano debería estar ya en capacidad de poder trabajar, por ejemplo, en Estados Unidos. O un ingeniero de Estados Unidos venir, obviamente ellos sí, no tienen ningún problema de, de poder trabajar en cualquier, en, acá en el Perú, ¿no? como en el pasado. La mayoría de las empresas mineras hace 15 años eran americanos. Teníamos a Felt Dodge, Newmont, a Sarco, teníamos eh, como este Cerro de Pasco, de varias empresas, ¿no? Hoy el mundo ha cambiado, y hay empresas ya de otras nacionalidades y una empresa que nació ahora muy grande, eh, Freeport, que no tiene muchos años de vida, ahora es muy grande, ¿no? A nivel mundial. Entonces, eh, la pregunta es, ¿habría una posibilidad de que el SM pueda ayudar a los peruanos y los peruanos también hacer el esfuerzo, pues, porque nosotros lo que necesitamos, yo como profesor universitario digo acá, todos los jóvenes deben ser competitivos, por decir, para poder trabajar en cualquier parte del mundo. ¿no? ¿No? Hay, 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 hay casos muy exitosos, por cierto, hoy muchos jóvenes que se han ido a hacer una maestría a Arizona, fundamentalmente para Tajo Abierto, para Colorado School of Mines, Missouri, Montana en el pasado fue muy poderoso, eh, cualquier otra escuela, ¿no? 
eh, crees que qué necesitamos, qué debemos hacer nosotros los peruanos para poder encontrar eso, de estimular, digamos, a un, un concurso para poder acceder a una especialización en los Estados Unidos. Gracias. No está bien. Very good question. Gracias. Very good question, Ramulo. We consider SME truly an international society now. And as such, I think we need to provide the services on an international basis. The companies you mentioned now aren't all U.S. or, or British or other countries. I think companies are becoming global and have global leadership. I think there are scholarships. I see at our universities many students from other countries, uh, many of the students in the U.S. And I think it is something we should talk about and try to figure out some possibilities of how to do that. Uh, I know our WAMI group is very active in Peru, and they provide scholarship money, I'm sure, to help many here. And Dave, I'm not sure if you uh, have other thoughts on that, but I think it's something we should take up and discuss further. I think there's a fundamental change taking place right now about the importance of engineers and especially mining engineers amongst many of the world's companies, whether they be U.S. based or Australia or Peruvian or, or European based. Um, in many downturns in the industry prior to this, um, younger people, um, engineers, would be uh, let go or laid off from an organization. Um, and that's not happening quite as much right now. Um, there aren't uh, massive uh, layoffs um, in this downturn in the industry as there has been in the past. And I think, I think that part's good that these companies recognize the importance of keeping good people. Um, now, being competitive in the world that uh, Ramulo mentioned, I would encourage you to um, create those um, industry academic partnerships because I think the money is going to have to come from industry to maintain quality education at the universities. Uh, SME um, is undertaking a big initiative right now, which Steve didn't get into because it is pretty U.S. centric. Um, for us, um, but uh, we recognize the importance of keeping uh, the mining engineering schools open in the U.S. There's 14 of them right now that are certified. Um, and in doing that, uh, we're reaching out to our industry partners, companies, both suppliers and mine companies, um, to make sure that um, we have professors to be able to teach at these schools. Um, and uh, I think that uh, when we make that um, industry academic partnership work right, um, industry is reaching into these schools, pulling students out to um, take internships and obviously eventually get employed after you earn your degree. Um, and, and I think that that's something that uh, we'd be more than happy to try to work with you and uh, I guess Antonio left, uh, but uh, uh, we, we need to work with organizations in order to make sure that that industry academic partnership um, takes place. Bien, entonces este, el tiempo está dispuesto para que el auditorio también pueda hacer llegar sus interrogantes, sus preguntas a los eh, panelistas. Buenos días. Quisiera preguntarle a mi ingeniero este, acerca de algunos consejos para nosotros como estudiantes ser competitivos a nivel global. Gracias. Good question. <laughs> Obviously, learning other languages, something I failed to do when I was younger, 
and I'm, I'm trying to do that now later in life, but I've, I see many of you are learning English and other languages to make yourself more competitive in a worldwide market. Uh, it, it is probably, the communication is the key to being a good engineer. Not only, you have to have the technical ability, but the communication is key. And getting involved in professional organizations like this. Uh, the student design competition. I commend all of you who participated in that. No matter whether you win or lose, you learn. And, and it's a great way of learning how to present yourself and work with others. We all have to work in teams, not just engineers, but we have to work with geologists and scientists and depend on each other in what we do in our life. So always continue to learn, look at every opportunity that you can. But communication is the key. I'll add one more comment to Steve's. Um, your involvement in the SME local or student chapter uh, shows your leadership. Uh, it demonstrates your commitment to the industry. Uh, it put, puts you in a place to learn and to hear of opportunities that makes yourself competitive. Uh, so I encourage you to stay involved in those types of activities and as you graduate, get involved in IIMP and other organizations that uh, support uh, professional development and growth. That's really, you guys are the best probably in the industry or the best students in, in all of the schools that are sitting right here in this room. So you probably are um, the, the best uh, people that the industry can get a hold of right now. So I congratulate you for being here and keep taking the in initiative to be involved. And being here at this uh, conference at Peru Man, get out and meet the people that are in the booths and the exhibits that establishing those relationships is key to your future. Muy buenos días. Eh, mi nombre es Berli David Cristóbal Coaguila. Eh, me voy a presentar. Soy de la Universidad Nacional de Moquegua. Moquegua queda a tres horas y media de aquí de la ciudad de, de Moquegua. Y, no, de acá de la ciudad de Arequipa, perdón. Eh, yo quiero hacer extensivo el saludo de, 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 de todo el capítulo de Student Chapter de, 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 de la Universidad Nacional de Moquegua. Y también agradecer bastante a la SME y al Instituto de Ingenieros de Minas de, del Perú por siempre abrirnos la, la puerta. Eh, yo quisiera hacer al, algunos comentarios y también alguna duda. Eh, en el tema minero, eh, nosotros como estudiantes o todo aquel estudiante que tenga que ver con la minería, eh, de hecho que se siente identificado y orgulloso, ¿no? pero no es así o no ocurre ello con las personas que no tienen nada que ver con la industria minera, y son estas personas que de repente toman malas decisiones y provocan bastante tiempo de retraso para, la, para el inicio de, nuevo, de nuevos proyectos mineros. Y yo voy a reconocer, hay un promotor aquí en el Perú, es el ingeniero Rómulo Muchumamani de los Amautas Mineros. Esto va trabajando bastante tiempo y se ha extendido en todas las universidades nacionales. Y esto no solo es en, con el tema minero o las escuelas mineras, sino también ha agrupado a otras carreras que tienen que ver con el tema social. Entonces, eso es admirable. Por ese lado, por la energía de los jóvenes, se está avanzando. Pero mm, nosotros como motas mineros muchas veces uh, hay energía como jóvenes y hemos tocado las puertas de muchas empresas uh, privadas para que nos brinden el apoyo económico principalmente y muchas veces se nos ha negado o de repente no nos los han brindado rápido o a, a tiempo y nos ha ganado el tiempo. Entonces, no sé si de esa manera el SM nos pueda canalizar y podamos integrar no solo el SM, sino otras organizaciones que promueven la minería y generar identidad en todas las poblaciones ¿no? o en todas las comunidades. Lo otro es que sería bueno, eh, así como lo hace el instituto, eh, a todos sus asociados brinda las conferencias de los jueves mineros y yo sé que también lo hace SM allá. Entonces, de repente la manera de... Um, 
más, más óptima sería aprovechar la tecnología y que sea pues esa información abierta ¿no? sobre los manejos, lo que hacen allá ¿no? en Estados Unidos. Hay minas que ya cerraron y han quedado pues hermosos ¿no? de lo que más antes eran ¿no? o y han sido ocupados para los skateboys y todo ello. ¿no? Es admirable eso y eso es, esa imagen también debería trans ser transmitida no solo a Estados Unidos sino a otras comunidades como al Perú. Muchas gracias, muy amable por su atención. Gracias, a good comments, and, and we will take that into consideration. <laughs>
Entonces, ojalá, ojalá que se den las circunstancias para que el pueblo también entienda. Gracias. Muy bien. Eh, buenos días. Eh, mi pregunta para los señores de ese mes sería la siguiente. Eh, James Robinson eh, dice que la ingeniería no resuelve los, pobre, los problemas de la pobreza y del desarrollo, lo resuelve la política. Y eso me parece que es muy coincidente con, en la exposición. SME recomienda como parte de este trabajo involucrarse en temas políticos. Me parece muy importante y muy coincidente con la opinión de Robinson. Eso quería, por favor, pedirle una mayor explicación sobre ese tema que me parece trascendental en este momento en nuestro país, el Perú. Sí, comentando este mensaje, quiero informarles a Steve a Dave que hace cuatro días estuvo aquí James Robinson en Lima, el autor, coautor de, de Why Nations Fail, ¿Por qué fracasan los países? Y se hizo un profundo análisis. ¿eh? ¿Por qué fracasan los países? ¿Por qué dice? Porque una élite captura el país y nunca deja avanzar al resto. Una gran condición. Y eso es institucionalidad. Y cuando eso es lo que pasó con el Perú, 15 años o más de bonanza... Hubo dinero, hubo plata, ingresos para las regiones, canon, mucha plata. Pero en ese momento nadie dijo hay que invertir más en la investigación, hay que meter más plata a las universidades, pero para investigación. Entonces eh, hubiera sido distinto la historia. Ya pasaron, ya, y ahora bajaron los precios de los metales, nuestra economía está débil, Estamos exportando menos, compramos más, importando más, vendiendo menos. ¿Y ahora es cuando? Pues todo el mundo dice, ¿y qué hicimos? Pues nadie movió el dedo para decir, ese momento era para poder invertir. Entonces, eso eh, explicó muy bien en Lima James Robinson el libro. Excelente. Es lectura obligada, muchachos. Lectura obligada, muchachos. Compren hoy mismo. Ahorita pueden entrar al Face, pueden descargar. PDF, en este momento, ¿por qué fracasan los países? ¿No? Y obviamente la minería para nosotros sigue siendo importante porque no es, podemos reemplazar ese pedazo que representa ¿no? así de un año para otro con, otra, con otras actividades. Y cuando se trata con los jóvenes, yo como profesor tengo que decirles pues que tenemos todavía una cartera de casi 70 millones, 70 mil millones de proyectos porque de los 65 que habla el Estado, dos o tres proyectos que no están en esa cartera, dos grandes nuevos descubrimientos en el Perú, de clase mundial, se habla de uno de 3 mil millones, el otro de 4 mil millones, más o menos 7, 8 mil millones de dólares más en dos proyectos nuevos, que tienen que sumar ahora la cartera. ¿no? O sea que si ustedes están estudiando, tengan la certeza de que si, si hay buenas políticas y bien hecho la minería, habrá mucho trabajo, mucho trabajo. No hay que preocuparse, hay que prepararse. Well, I think to address what you're saying, engineers and scientists are problem solvers. In recent years, we've recognized that there are problems outside of just the design of mines and the technologies. We have to look at the social problems and figure out how to address those in any new development whether it's in Peru, whether it's in U.S., Australia, or Africa. You have to take the social considerations in to any design, any project design. And I think people are finally realizing that, the, the companies, the corporate management. And it has to be a partnership, I think, with the government entities that are regulating mining. They have to realize. And as someone said here, many 
Government officials have never seen a mine before and don't realize the life cycle of a mine. All they've seen are the negative images in the media. So, and going back to another question, comment earlier from someone over here, the lifelong learning, reading the books like James Robinson's and, and others, that's how you can expand your knowledge on how to be a better professional. So hopefully that addresses your question and comment a bit. Sí, buenos días con todos. Eh, quiero felicitar al expositor por su por su exposición y por las numerosas actividades que realiza la SME. Yo tenía una inquietud, básicamente yo creo para la bueno, para todo el panel y de repente don el ingeniero Rómulo mucho cómo acercar la conexión de la, de la universidad con la empresa, o sea, la práctica la o, el, o el estudiante con el ejercicio profesional. ¿no? Acá en el Perú, ayer lo reconocido en la ceremonia de inauguración, el rector de la Universidad Nacional San Agustín, que la universidad anda desconectada de la empresa, y es una verdad en el Perú principalmente. ¿no? Tal vez la experiencia de Estados Unidos nos sirva, Acá en el Perú, regresando a la posición que tenga don Rómulo mucho, la nueva ley universitaria va a ayudar a que esta conexión se, sea más real, más viable, porque hay ejemplos, yo lo veo, de empresas que se acercan a la universidad, pero hay muy poco avance en, acá en el Perú particularmente. Gracias. En primer lugar, Javier, eh, tienes toda la razón. Eh, en países mineros uh, avanzados eh, hay mucha ligazón entre empresa, eh, Estado, empresa, universidad. Y lamentablemente, no, 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 no estamos en el mejor de los casos en el Perú. Hay casos aislados, hay algún acercamiento, pero no hay como política de Estado de que, por ejemplo, para algún tema de tecnología que hay que investigar, eh, haya pues empresa universidad y que haya la oportunidad para investigar ¿no? eh, si bien es cierto la minería es una actividad que en donde más transferencia de tecnología existe en el Perú y por qué les digo eso porque las grandes corporaciones las empresas globales eh, tienen sus minas en Canadá en Australia, en Estados Unidos eh, en África ¿no? Para operar acá tienen que apl aplicar los mismos estándares, la misma tecnología que se inventó. Como un ejemplo nada más, lo digo, de los molinos HPGR, ¿no? que es una evolución en la tecnología de la molienda. Molinos de bolas, el semiautógeno, el SAG, el, apareció el HPGR, ahora hay otro, Roller Crusher. Es innovación tras innovación. Son molinos más pequeños, menos energía, menos espacio y tienen la misma capacidad, hasta ambientalmente más. Eso es lo que necesitamos en la universidad, en todos los temas, porque lo que se busca es utilizar menos energía, utilizar menos diésel, utilizar, o sea, menos contaminación. ¿no? Entonces, hay, todavía hay un campo grande de investigación, ¿no? o sea, eso tenemos que poner, tiene que ver una política de Estado que dice Javier, de unir la empresa con el Estado pero también la universidad tiene que acercarse a la empresa. ¿no? Estamos divorciados acá. Igual las, las empresas ¿no? muchas veces dicen, no, yo me resuelvo mis problemas. Y si quiero una patente, una investigación, lo traigo, me lo compro. ¿no? Pero no hay un esfuerzo de desarrollarlo acá. ¿No? En el país del sur ya están avanzando. Ellos tienen estos famosos intercambios. Hay muchos profesores americanos que enseñan en las universidades. Tienen por un año, dos años. En el Perú todavía no hemos encontrado eso. En ninguna universidad. Pero tenemos que hacerlo. Tenemos que hacerlo. Entonces, la transferencia de tecnología es que aprendamos esos desarrollos nosotros los peruanos. Y bueno, ¿no? eh, mejorará siempre eh, la condición, el clima de decir a la población que la minería es una, como cualquier otra actividad, ¿no? que, que si lo hacemos bien, no debe, no debe impactar 
a, a, digamos, al medio ambiente ni a la, a la comunidad. Creo que esa es una tarea siempre pendiente y que tenemos que seguir trabajando en eso, ¿no? No sé si, if you have some, any, any comments more, additional comments. Going back to one of the, part of your question, how to establish a better relationship with the industry in the university. And, and perhaps this is done, but in many of the student chapters I've been involved with in the past, they invite in industry representatives to meet with them on a regular basis just to give a talk, uh, buy some pizza, and meet informally, get a presentation. And, and that it then allows students to meet with their peers, their potential employers in the future. And, and establish those better relationships. Uh, again, going back and kind of addressing several of the comments and questions, government and industry should be partners because government derives income from what the mining industry does and what the workers pay in their taxes to the government. So. It shouldn't be a completely adversarial relationship. There needs to be more cooperation and collaboration. Companies need to be responsible. Sure, there are going to be problems with health and safety with the environment, but everyone should work together to solve those problems. And again, that's where I think the universities come in. And as I said earlier, I think SME is the bridge between those three sectors, government, industry, and academia. Buenos días. Eh, mi nombre es José Félix Enrique Spanibra. Vengo de la Universidad Nacional del Altiplano, Puno. Agradecerle ante todo, Mr. Steve, Mr. Dave, Ingeniero Rómulo, su presencia. Eh, de la región de Puno de donde yo vengo, existe en mayor cantidad de la población es antiminera. Y tal vez es el motivo que la universidad no recibe eh, ningún apoyo de las empresas. ¿no? ¿Cómo nosotros, como estudiantes de ingeniería de minas, podemos cambiar esto? Vol cambiar la región de Puno a que apoye a las empresas y estas nos apoyen a nosotros. Porque yo pienso que hay mucho por hacer. Gracias. Well, good comment, uh, thank you. I, I agree with you. you. There needs to be some way to connect the universities and the companies. And it's a constant struggle. Uh, I've seen cycles in the industry in the US where sometimes the connection wanes between companies and the universities. And it takes people, people like you, to get engaged and reach out to try to reestablish those connections. So it's a, it's a continuous problem that we have to work on. And it's something we recognize, and, and that's, I hope that's something that SME can assist with wherever in the world. I can do it in English if it's easier for you. Uh, in relation with the last question, yeah, I, I want to be a bit more aggressive. <coughs> I think uh, it would be very good to have an advice of you. In rela our realities are totally different between the States and Peru, but maybe you have some experience related to the problems that we have really in Peru. There is a, a misuse of the uh, social interest of the communities in relation to mining. And I say interest because if you think in a mine project, on a mine project, in the surroundings, people is really interested to be part of it. But political groups misuse uh, any little problem related to the project and at the end we have very important projects like 
Tia Maria, like Tambo Grande, like Conga, which are stopped, which are not, not the future of our country, are the present of our country. This is also in relation with uh, a lack of conviction of our government about the importance of our mining industry. This is, this is a reality, this is true. And I think it would be very important if you have to say a couple of words in this relationship coming from your experience, from uh, international experience, for these young people, no, our, our students, and our present and future of our mining industry. Sorry if it's a bit <laughs> f uh, uh, different uh, uh, what I am asking in relation to the experience, but maybe you have heard about our problems and have some comments. I tried to address some of that in my presentation earlier, and, and I had an image I think you might have missed, but it was of a number of people sitting on a beach with their heads in the sand. And sometimes I think that's what happens to our companies. Whenever a problem comes up, they sometimes will ignore the problem and, and not address it and try to correct the misconceptions or misinformation that might be coming in. Uh, we have the same problem in the U.S., and I think we see it all across the world, is a problem can be blown out of proportion, and certain groups will seize on that to provide the opposition. I think the industry and, and everyone involved need to address those head-on and correct the misconceptions that, that come about. And, and we have to be honest that there are problems with mining. There are environmental issues, there are health and safety, and we have to do the best that we can to address those and be transparent to our public and our government agencies. And, and I think we have to establish those partnerships early on in a project rather than be more proactive than reactive. Does that kind of address your comment? Guys. Thank you. Um, good, good morning to everyone. I am Cesar Bellido Pirola. We all are from the University San Antonio Abad del Cusco student chapter. And I would like to ask you, what's your opinion to carry out a sustainable mine operation nowadays? Thank, thank you. To many, mining and sustainability is an oxymoron, that, and I think I said that earlier. The land uses for after mining, the post mining, have to be considered and planned, and I think that's a way to work with the communities, the people that live in the area. Uh, back in the U.S. and many of the areas I worked, the communities were there because of the mines. Now we're having to range out and find resources and, and we have to plan mines where there are people living have, who have already established their communities. And I've been working with uh, one in Colombia where a whole community will have to be moved to advance a mine. And the company has to address that and provide a new situation. Not everyone will be happy, but in many of these situations I've seen, a newer and better community can be built and provided for the residents. So it's a, it, it's a issue that we are still struggling with, is, is what is the sustainability of mining? For right now, everything we have in our lives in some way comes from mining. And that's the message that doesn't get out there. Uh, I, I've had conversations with many NGOs and many activists who don't understand that everything they have in their life came from a mine. And when you really start talking with them and pulling out the phone, the cell phone, or talking about their computer and where those materials come from, sometimes they start getting it. And I, and I remember working with the Boy Scouts in our country and explaining to them 
where everything they used in their lives, I could see a light bulb go off in their eyes when they finally understood that. So it, sometimes the, the education starts very early to get that point across. The, the Muy buenos días, soy Claudia, también provengo de la Universidad del Cusco. Mi pregunta va más ligada a lo que es la presencia femenina ¿no? en la actividad minera, que está creciendo un poco más. Yo quisiera saber, eh, va para los tres, si conocen alguna institución que apoye a aquella mujer que apuesta ¿no? por esta actividad. Y hablaron del Guayme. Yo quisiera saber cómo, cómo podría acceder a, a, a esa beca o qué requisitos podría o debería tener, ¿no? si me podrían ilustrar eso. Gracias. Well, let me give you a few statistics. Um, SME's membership, all 15,000 people in our organization, about uh, 10% are female and 90% are male. If you only look at our membership that is under the age of 35, our uh, membership's about 25% female and 75% male. And if you look at just our student memberships in SME, you would think it's about 50-50. It's, it's actually about 40-60, 40% female, 60% male. So it's changing and it's changing fast and there's great opportunities um, for women in this industry. Uh, I do know that the whole industry is concerned about making more opportunity for uh, women. Um, we talk about the issue of inclusion other nationalities, other ethnic groups, et cetera, all those need to be considered in uh, developing a high quality workforce for the mining industry. Um, going forward at SME, we have some programs. We have women at, of SME programs. Uh, we have um, other groups, some like women in mining groups that we've engaged with, as well as the Women's Mining Coalition. Uh, s several other groups there that SME wants to partner with and, uh, and promote uh, opportunities uh, for, uh, for women in the industry. One other thing uh, I'd add is, is that there's a lot of opportunity for, uh, for everyone in the room here, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the important thing because the industry hasn't been through a big hiring in a long time. Um, It's my generation that's retiring in the next five to 10 years, and it's going to be replaced by you all sitting in the room here. Um, and really what's going to happen is, is that we didn't, it's my generation and all the people in the late 80s, 90s, and early 2000s that we never hired in this industry. So we're basically replacing two generation of workers right now in this industry. So that's going to be giving you all lots of opportunities quickly and early on in your careers, I think, in the industry. So I think it's very bright for, for that, uh, for everyone in the industry right now, especially young people. And I think um, we have to understand that we have to replace those two generations and those workers have to come from somewhere and we need women, men, all ethnic groups, all backgrounds uh, in order to have a positive uh, group for, or working group for the industry. Well, it's an issue that's very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> and I had a former SME president, a woman, who told me one time that she would like to get away from the term women in anything. She just wants to get to where everybody is the same. And you know, I tend to agree with her, but we have to get to that point. It's not just the mining industry. It's, it's all of the engineering and technical professions. If you look at other professional groups, and I'm not sure how the statistics are in uh, Peru or other countries, but I know in the US, doctors, lawyers, accountants, it's about 50-50, male-female. But in engineering, across the board, it's still only about 20 to 30% female. So it's not just mining, it, it's the engineering and, and science careers in total. 
And in, in the U.S., there are programs called STEM, uh, science, technology, en engineering, math. Uh, they're now calling it STEAM. They're adding an A in there, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, to try to get more people interested in technical careers. But it's something we're addressing. And it, you'd ask about how do you get involved with WAMI. Uh, the history, many of you probably know the history of WAMI. It was the women's auxiliary, the wives of the mining engineers who were raising money to help give scholarships to other mining engineers. And it wasn't until recent years that that really opened up to women as well. But I see a, a change. They're beginning to get more active in providing professional programs. And I just learned this year uh, in fact, a number of the, the ladies from Peru were in uh, the U.S. last week for a meeting, and they told us about a new program of uh, bringing in women professionals to speak to students about their careers, how to advance their careers. So I'd uh, encourage you to go talk to them in, in their booth, and I'm just learning about some of their programs that they have involved. So hopefully that helps a bit. Muy buenos días, mi nombre es Jeremy Cristóbal Torres, soy de la Universidad Nacional de San Agustín. Mm, si bien es cierto, el conocimiento es importante y en su última diapositiva observé que el nivel que ustedes consideran de la educación es muy importante, ¿dónde queda la ética profesional y el liderazgo? ¿Dónde consideran que debería estar? Bueno, well, professional ethics es uno de the underlying tenets of our engineering and scientific careers. Uh, as licensed engineers, and, and as my familiarity with it, it is the number one consideration, the public health, safety, and welfare that has to be in the forefront of your career. And just like any other profession, that is the consideration that has to be foremost in your day-to-day -day life. And, and I'll add, going back, and kind of, I think it ties to what you're saying and, and what uh, we had just asked in the comment Dave made about your generation and my daughter's generation coming in you all will be given more responsibility at a younger age than any of our previous generations because we're going away and we only have a few years left to work and there's a big gap in, in our profession. Um, in the U.S. and I think in, in many other countries, there's a shortage of engineers and technical people. So those of you that are coming out now will have, I think, great opportunities. And learning the management skills, that goes back to another question earlier from, from someone up in the back about what to do to prepare yourself better, is learn more about accounting and management. Because that was one of my weakest areas in, in trying to run a business is understanding the the financial side of, the, of, of our practice. So th that's another thing to branch out in your studies and, and learn on your own if you have to, or take an additional course in, in business and, and management and, and financial accounting. So. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, premiamos con nuestros aplausos entonces a nuestro expositor, al ingeniero Steve Garden, por haber compartido con nosotros el, cambiando la percepción sobre la minería en el mundo. También agradecemos y reiteramos nuestros aplausos a los miembros de la, de la mesa.